A developing story as a gunman opens fire on a city bus. A suicide attack in Israel angering many people around the world on a day set aside to remember victims. Let people realize that we need peace. We'll hear from survivors who live here in the valley. The fact that I wrote these songs before they were born and they make them so trendy and hip, it's, it's wonderful. Some of his songs were featured tonight on American Idol. We'll hear from tonight's celebrity judge, Neil Sedak. This is Arizona's best. Fox 10 News at 10. And hello, I'm Stephanie Sandoval. And I'm Troy Hayden. We begin with a Fox 10 News alert. Police are looking for a gunman who opened fire on a Phoenix City bus tonight and actually hit the driver. Happened at 7th Avenue in Buckeye. Sabra Gertz is there live. Sabra, what happened? Troy, the driver of that city bus taken to the hospital. Good Samaritan. Right arm. We're not sure if that's a male or a female driver. We can tell you tonight what we know is that shots were fired, we believe, from the sidewalk or the Matt Henson projects. You can see the bus. It is this number 6093, the 7th Avenue to Baseline bus. There was one passenger on board the bus not injured. We have just learned, Troy, that two suspects uh, are in custody tonight. Two juvenile boys, we understand. They are looking for a third suspect. They have a house uh, kind of set apart right now, determining whether or not they need to go inside and find this third suspect. We can tell you that they are teenagers. We're not sure if they meant to hit the bus driver, if the bus was moving, or if this, this was uh, an intentional thing. We can tell you that they've had 7th Avenue uh, uh, marked off for traffic. Buckeye as well. They've set up a perimeter. We've seen an air search going on here tonight. We've seen uh, several Phoenix police vehicles. They've set up a staging area. Not taking this situation lightly at all. Very serious one. In fact, we were told to get out of the way because this uh, was a dangerous area earlier. So again, what we know, shots fired, bus driver taken to the hospital, two suspects in custody right now, a third one police are still looking for. Troy? So no life-threatening injury on that bus driver just hit in the arm. That's right. We understand hit in the right arm. Um, we understand some glass may have shattered as well, so there may be some other injuries, but not life threatening. Let's get back to the show. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Shot in the face. The bullet went through both of her cheeks, but she's going to be okay, according to doctors. A lot of people had warned her apparently that it would be a matter of time before something terrible happened. She works here at night time, and on weekends she stays here until 1 o'clock in the morning by herself. Um, it's not safe. Well, the victim has been awake today and is actually able to talk. As of now, no arrests have been made. A teacher at an elementary school in Avondale is under arrest, accused of inappropriately touching a young boy. Mark Martinez has that story. He's live, Mark. Troy, a story that seems to be coming all too familiar here in the Valley. That teacher, Rosemary Crow, booked into Madison Street Jail tonight after an investigation by Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They accuse her of having a, a molesting, I should say, a 14-year-old boy, a boy that she has known since he was in third grade. When students show up for class at Littleton Elementary in Avondale tomorrow morning, one of their teachers won't be there. 47-year-old Rosemary Crow was arrested at the school today. On charges, she molested a 14-year-old boy a number of times. According to sheriff's deputies, the encounters happened in movie theaters or the teacher's car for at least the past six months. The victim says Crow would touch him outside of his clothes. He says Rosemary Crow has been a family friend since he was in third grade. Tonight, the elementary school teacher facing one count of providing obscene material to a minor and five counts of molesting a minor. The arrest happened on the Littleton campus around four after students had gone home for the day. District officials are expected to meet first thing in the morning to decide how to break the news to Crow's young students. And the sheriff's office tells us tonight they believe the crimes may have started when the boy was as young as 12 years old. They are still in the process of interviewing him at this point. They are also looking into the possibility that there may be more victims involved here. Mark, uh, providing obscene material to a minor, what was she showing him, books or something like that, or magazines, or do we know? Well, that's exactly what they say. They said uh, described it as books and uh, other literature, but they wouldn't go into specifics. But that apparently was the obscene material that she allegedly gave this boy. Mark Martinez live, thanks. Well, a small child is recovering from burns tonight after she's apparently scalded by a pot of beans. 
A rescue helicopter flew the one-year-old to the Maricopa Medical Center from her home near 101st Avenue in Camelback. She was reportedly calm and she was alert. Now, investigators say she pulled a pot from the stove and the beans poured all over her legs and body. A valley mother, 10 weeks pregnant, is killed by an accused drunk driver. His attorney by his side, 22-year-old Eliseo Rodriguez, will be before a judge this afternoon. Police say he was drinking. He ran a red light at 7th Avenue and Greenway early this morning and then slammed into the victim's car. 19-year-old Nicole Wallace was killed. Her 21-year-old husband, Joseph, badly hurt. The couple's 1-year-old son was in a car seat, wasn't hurt. Rodriguez faces several charges now, including manslaughter. And a Fox follow-up on a Tempe lawyer accused of driving drunk and running over a Dobson High School student, 18-year-old Young Kim. He was crossing the street against the light on his bike when he was hit and killed several weeks ago. The accident reports just released today show Tempe attorney Keith Moore had three bottles of vodka in his car. Police say Moore's blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. His eyes were bloodshot, his speech slurred. The report is now being forwarded to the county attorney's office. Well, three postal workers are taken to the hospital after a hazmat scare involving a mysterious powder. The main Gilbert post office was evacuated this morning after three workers found a white powder on a container of mail. That container came from the downtown Phoenix post office. Richard Von Braun was the first person to find that yellowish white powder. It was covered over probably 15 to 20 parcels, so it was quite a bit. Three workers were later released from the hospital. The substance has been tested, and it looks like it's a material from a fire extinguisher. Apparently, folks at the main post office downtown had to use one last night for a small fire. A suicide bomber blows himself up in the doorway of a crowded cafe in Tel Aviv. The latest count, four dead, at least 45 injured. Police say a guard actually stopped the bomber from going inside that beachfront restaurant. So far, nobody's taken responsibility for this attack. But it happens on a day of remembrance for the victims of the Holocaust. Tammy Vo now live with reaction from Holocaust survivors here in the Valley. Tammy? And quite honestly, Troy, some Holocaust survivors tell me tonight they did expect something to happen today. But tonight here at Temple Beth Israel, people gathered to remember the Holocaust. And for one man, it brought tears to his eyes. Germany, September 1942, the last day Dermichi Dobacheski saw his father alive. But when I said goodbye to my father at uh, that day when I left, uh, I don't know if it was just a show of affection or if he had a premonition or something. He hugged me <laughs> very strongly. I'm sorry. <laughs> 60 years later, it still brings tears to his eyes. Then, just a boy, Drobacheski was also separated from his brother. When the Germans invaded Luxembourg, my brother and I fled on our bicycles. Uh, I lost sight of him immediately. I went to Paris. <laughs> On this Holocaust Day of Remembrance, the Jewish community gathers at a concert. The lyrics taken from actual letters written in Nazi concentration camps, a place where Marsha David spent four years. I remember it every day. For this survivor, today's suicide bombing in Tel Aviv is a symbol that Jerusalem may never achieve peace. I think it's time that people realize that we need peace. We just need peace at any cost. They realize they can't change a painful history. But what they can do is simply remember. Imagine not being able to talk about something for 50 long years. That's how long it took one Holocaust survivor tonight to be able to actually talk about what happened to her and to even be able to talk about that with her family. Reporting live from North Phoenix, Tammy Bo, Fox 10 News.